Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to the uh, most politically incorrect <laughs> session of, of this conference. Um, my name is CK, and uh, we just founded Vitas Data about six months ago. Um, so the company is uh, six months old, and we have just released our first GA um, of the product. So what I want to do is uh, we will first give some background on um, on, the, on the technology um, um, landscape, and and then we'll talk about TPCHQ1, which is what we base the performance claims on, uh, just to get you familiarized with, with what it does. Um, and then we'll talk about you know, why 100%, why we are 100% uh, compatible with Postgres. And finally, you know, we'll go through a few iterations of how we get the performance uh, to go to 180 times. Okay. Okay, so, so first on background. Um, so, there are two founders in uh, Vitesse Data, and we are, uh, you know, X VMware, X Greenplum, X Microsoft SQL Server, X Informix people. Uh, I think the only thing missing here is uh, some Oracle experience, but <laughs> otherwise we're covered. Um, so first, you know, we all know that Postgres is, is amazing. Uh, a database system is not just about uh, select queries. It has uh, whole lot of stuff surrounding it, uh, you know, authentication, authorization. <laughs> yeah. So Postgres provides all these that we uh, don't need to redo. Uh, what we wanted to do is we'll just focus on speed and uh, make it go faster. Okay, so we, we, it, it lets us focus without, um, if we have to redo this whole thing, I, it'll take us like, I don't know, 10 years. <laughs> Um, so what is interesting recently is um, the hardware has changed a lot over the past few years. Uh, in, you know, before, you were always optimizing for disk performance, right? Because it doesn't make sense if you can make, uh, if you can compile and run the query much faster only if it's in memory, uh, but if you are limited by disk. Um, but these days, um, you're no longer limited by disk. Uh, I think, I don't know how many people here, but probably have database that are smaller than their main memory size. Um, so there's essentially no disk I.O. going on in those systems. Uh, what, you, what you see is the bottleneck has completely shifted, right? It's no longer on the disk controller. It's now between, it's not the memory controller, between the, the chip, the, the processor and, and, and uh, RAM, okay? So that's one. The other thing is what we see is there's a lot of cores coming online, right? Um, we're going to see we're going to see probably a hundred core this year. Um, I don't know by 2020 we probably have 500 cores, and you want to make sure that you you are able to utilize those cores. Otherwise, there's 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 you're going to run into a problem. Um, I think the only way out of it is probably running virtual machines then, right? You run a few instances of Postgres uh, on top of 500 core machine and you try to get performance that way. But if you can make, make use of the hundred, hundreds of core, then you know, why, why not? Okay, so this is a TPCHQ1. Um, for those who are not familiar, it's, it's basically a scan on a, on a line item table, which has you know, 6 million for one gig, 600 million for a 100 gig uh, benchmark. Um, it has a filter and a hash act, a sort, and then a lot of uh, projections and aggregates and projections, right? So is there, there are like uh, a lot of sum, a lot of averages and uh, some counts. Okay, this is what yeah, I, I see data scientists do day in, day out, right? So what they do is they just want to count features. Look at the features, try to see which feature in the data set would affect uh, the outcome of uh, um, what they predicted. And they, they do this live, they sit in front of the terminal and they type it, <laughs> right? So if you have to run this query and it takes two hours, it, it, you know, you're, you're just, wasting their time, right? You need to do this really fast for, for the data scientists. Uh, 
Um, so, so first, so on, on Vitesse DB standard edition, we are able to run this query uh, eight times faster than standard Postgres. Um, and on average, we run things about 3.7 times faster uh, for the whole benchmark. Okay. And we will go, we'll go into how we, how we do that later. And for our, our enterprise edition, um, we are able to do up to 180 times faster um, for, for this particular query. And uh, on average, it's about 27 to 37 times faster, depending on whether you have a column store or not. Questions? Okay, so next. So let's talk about how we, how we are 100% uh, Postgres compatible, right? So we base this claim quite simply by, uh, on, on this, uh, on this um, algorithm that we use. So you submit a query to Postgres, it goes through you know, the parser, the parser comes up with a plan, and then, uh, so the parser passed <laughs> the passed, uh, AST to, to the planner that comes up with the plan. And we basically take this plan and we determine uh, if we want to JIT it with LLVM, right? Um, so there are a few things that could happen where we decide not to JIT it. So first, if, if um, the query is very simple, uh, there is a cost associated with uh, compiling the query. And if the query is very simple, then it may make sense to just let Postgres run it. So we just throw it to Postgres in that, in that case. Um, the second case is if it's a, um, uh, we don't handle reads and writes. Uh, we don't handle writes, we handle reads only. So if it's um, insert, update, delete, uh, create table, we also give it to Postgres. So we don't, we don't change your data, only Postgres changes your data. Okay. And then um, finally, if, you use a, if the query use some uh, constructs that we don't support yet. So for instance, we don't support GIS uh, um, data types or, or queries yet. So in that case, we also give it back to Postgres. You know, otherwise, we will compile the query and then we'll run it to completion. Right? So in this case, um, that's, it's 100% it's compatible because anything that we don't run, uh, Postgres will take care. Yes? Column store storage. Uh, we're using our own um, implementation. We'll talk about it later. So in that case, we are not 100% when, when you use that. Um, so if it's 100% compatible, then you can imagine a use case like this, right? You run your OLTP system uh, with Postgres. You don't change a thing. And you, you know, Postgres gives you logical replica and you run Vitesse DB on, on another machine. And now you have, with, with, a lo with logical replication, and now you basically have the best of both worlds, right? You have OLTP system that, um, that you use for your everyday uh, queries, and you have this other system on the side that you can give it to your data scientists that you know, when they run a huge query, it won't impact your production. Right. So, so it's very important for us to maintain 100% compatibility. Or, you know, if you don't want to do a replication, you can basically replace your, pri your primary, right? So what you do is you just move your Postgres binary, uh, rename it, and then you just rename our binary in there, and then it would just uh, restart it, and it would just run, because uh, you won't even feel a difference. Okay, I'm doing very well on time. So let's see how we go to, to two times faster. Okay, so if you can imagine, um, you don't compile the whole query. I only compile the expressions part, right? If you look at, if you look at the query tree, you're doing, um, you know, you're doing scan and join and um, selects, but there are a lot of expression evaluation in there and you're only compiling the expression evaluation, right? So if you look at this expression, um, you know, just evaluating A is greater than B plus C. Um, but for those people who are familiar with Postgres uh, internals, you'll see that, you know, you, you, this look, would look familiar. It's going to do a um, info GT for comparison, right? And then it's going to do a uh, exact uh, eval scalar var where it goes and retrieves 
um, the value for A. And then it's going to compare, it's check if A is null. If it's null, then you, you just back out. And then you're going to do another call to info plus, right, where you add up B and C. Again, you, you, you call another function, the indirect call to retrieve B, another call to retrieve C, and then you check for overflow and, and you do the plus. And then finally, you, you check for the um, um, comparison. Make sense? So there are five indirect calls, and, and uh, this is how Postgres call an indirect call, right? It's, an <laughs> it, it's a direct function call. You call this function to call an indirect call. So you pass in a, a pointer to the function, and it would call it for you, right? So now you have one function call that calls an indirect function call. So those five indirect function calls between become 10 calls. Right? And then it has to fill up a structure before it can call the, the indirect function. Um, and then here is, here is info p plus. And what it does, you know, simply it, it takes two arguments and then it, it, it does a uh, check for overflow and, uh, and then it returns a sum. Okay, so if you do it in LLVM, this is what you do, right? You, you're going to load um, A, you're going to load whether A is null or not. So, you know, go through the whole thing for A, B, and C, and then you're going to do the addition, and the addition, the overflow will be, will be checked by um, machine, by, by, the, by um, um, assembly language, right? And, and then you don't even need to check the or because uh, check the null, you just null the bit. You just or the bit, right? If you, if anyone is null, it will be it'll be null. You don't need to do a, a, a conditional if to to check for nulls, right? So so you you get the sum, and then you get a to compare. And again, you or the null flag, and then you just uh, check on uh, check on whether you overflow. Right? If you don't overflow, you return whether A is greater than um, B plus C or not, and the null flag. And if the null flag is set, um, the caller will take care of it. So we, you will just do the operation whether it's null or not. So that's, that's how it, it, it goes a lot faster than, uh, than C code, because the C compiler cannot assume uh, this kind of stuff. Um, so in summary, you use LLVM to JIT expressions only. Um, you still interpret the plan, um, the plan tree. Um, we'll, we'll go through it more later. Um, and a lot of the indirect function calls becomes direct calls, or you simply inline it. Um, so a lot of ver when, as, when you're compiling, a lot of variables becomes constant, right? So things may be variable in the Postgres plan, but you know that they are constants when you are compiling it. Things like, you know, this, this variable is a integer, so you know that the length is four. You don't need to, if you want to skip it, you just add four, right? You don't need to say, if this is an integer, add four in, in, in the evaluation. Um, and also, um, you, when you compile, there are conditions in, uh, in the evaluation in Postgres uh, e executor where it has a lot of if conditions. And you know, if this is an integer, do this. If this is a string, do this. If this is a um, uh, numeric, do this, right? But when you're compiling, in our case, you know exactly that this is a integer. So you can skip all the others. You just evaluate the code for the part that, that uh, impacts your, your data type. So what this does is the code becomes a lot more uh, concise and, and the machine code that you generate um, will be very small compared to what Postgres has to go through. Right? It may pre presumably fit into the, uh, the I1, I2 cache. And finally, you know, overflow and stuff and like that. Hardware does a lot for you. And you can also use in 128 and stuff like that. Well, 
In 16 minutes, we get to eight times. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so how do we get from two times to, to eight times? Um, so what you have in Postgres uh, when you submit the Q1 query to Postgres is you get this kind of uh, expression tree, uh, a, a query tree, right? You get a scan node, you get a filter, uh, you get a hash act, and, you, and then finally you, you need to project and emit the, the, the data, um, the answer, sorry. Um, the way Postgres evaluates this is, you know, each of these is a pull request. It's a get next, right? So it's interpreted. It goes through the tree from top to bottom in an interpretive uh, fashion. So, the, so the, the control goes to the emit node, which will do a uh, get next to, the, to its child, which is a hash act, which will again do a get next node, uh, get next tuple to the filter, which in turn, you know, call the get next tuple to scan, right? So now you have already do like, you know, one, two, one, two, three, four, four calls, right? And then the tuple goes, goes back up. Uh, on the other side. Okay, so uh, on on your left side, on your right, um, you can see the the pseudo code that uh, uh, that describes how Postgres is, is uh, evaluating this this function, right? Uh, this query. So it's going to do a while loop. The, the emit node is going to do a while loop to get next from hash act. And then for each tuple that it gets back, it's going to emit it, right? So it's, it's going to go call hash act get next. And then hash act get next is going to do a while loop to go through the filter, right? And then for each node that it gets back, it's going to do um, hash, it's going to hash it, and it's going to advance the aggregate. And finally, when it finish, when there's no more tuple coming in from the filter, it's going to do a. Uh, it's going to go through the hash table, and it's going to finalize um, all the um, aggregates and returning them one by one. Right. Um, well, same for the filter. The filter is going to get a, a tuple from scans, and then it's going to qualify it and then return it. Right. And then the scans is going to get it from um, the disk. Again, uh, you know, it's always get next. So it's it's. It's a pool model. Uh, so what we do is um, you can make this whole, if you compile it, this whole query can become one function call. And you just call it and it runs from beginning to the end. Uh, it becomes sort of like a, instead of a pool model, it's almost like a push model. Right? So if you look at it here, the scan is going to run, for, so the blue stuff runs first. So the scan is going to run and it's going to get tuples from the relation. It's going to push it up, right? It's going to push it up to the if qualify T, which is a, a filter, the code that you use to filter. So it push it up to the filter, which in turns, you know, after it does that, it's going to push it up to the hash act. So the hash act is going to hash and you know, make the hash table and uh, advance the aggregates, right? And after you have gone through the relation completely, now you have a hash table of all the aggregates. You're going to go through the hash table, and you, you're going to finalize each, each uh, aggregate, and then you're going to call emit. Okay? So now, if you think about the execution model, it's, it's very different. Right? So, so this model, you go from emit down, and then back up. So this model, you go from the bottom, and it the, the tuple gets pushed up, right? Um, so, so one important thing that we do here is um, in scan, when you do a, a, a scan, it's going to go and grab the tuple. When it grabs a tuple, you, the first thing you do is you, you're going to deform it. And when you deform it, at that, at that time when, at, at the, at when you're deforming it, all the um, <coughs> columns are actually in, in registers. We know exactly which column are in which registers, right? And when they are, in, when they are inside registers, you are going to call um, if qualify T, which 
you know, immediately look at the registers. There's no, you, you don't need to put it in memory and do a call into Postgres to, to, to go to the next node. You just take the register and you do a compare and you know, kick it out if it, it doesn't work. Okay. So, so that's how you get some speed up there. Um, the other thing is when you're doing a scan, uh, when we are scanning, because we compile the query, we know exactly which table you're scanning. And so basically, in Postgres, you have one general um, um, heap deform function, right? That works for all tables. In our case, for each table, for each type of uh, scan, actually for each, each scan, we make the spe a special deformer just for you. Right? It doesn't make any decision in there. It knows exactly, you know, the first tuple is an int, sorry, the first field is an int, the second field is a float, the third field is an int. So it's going to just go through them. There's no while loop and, you know, for each, <laughs> for each, for each uh, column, if this is an int, then take it out and advance four bytes. If it is a float, take it out and advance eight bytes. It's just going to, uh, it's, it's, an, it's a serial program. Yes? You have to, no, no, LLVM doesn't do any of those. LLVM is, uh, is basically an assembly language uh, processor. So you have to write program to generate the assembly code. Okay, any more questions? No? Okay, so if you do this, then you get eight times. Um, and also another thing is, you know, if you look at these two things, um, this, is a, this is a software model, right? This is, people design this because it, it's easier for software programmers, uh, database programmers to think about a query. You, you make it in a tree and then each one does its own thing. It's, it's a software model. In this case, there's, there's no reason why you need a software model when you are um, running it in a processor, right? So you basically need to dissolve this model to make it, to make it generate code that works better for the processor. Okay, understand? <laughs> right, so, so one thing that we do there is, is uh, dissolve these boundaries and, um, and things will just run much faster and smoother for the CPU. So um, the next two steps are the easy ones, and I think it, it, it's, um, so what you do here is you just use multi-core, right? So you got eight times, and if you have 16 threads, you're going to get more than 100 times faster, right? Um, so how we do this comes from our Green Plum experience. This is almost like a mini Green Plum in each Postgres, right? This, each thread is like a, a segment in, 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 in Green Plum, and then you basically uh, run a, a parallel query uh, inside, inside, inside Postgres. So first you do a thread scan. So you know, the table is this big. You, you just let each thread takes a portion of it and they, they scan the table in, uh, sequentially, but in, uh, in, in turn, right? Each one grab a slice. Each one grab, grab the next, the next thread gets the next slice, right? You have 16 threads, and then they are going to compete and get 16 slices at a time, and then the next, and then you go again. And then for each slice, you're going to do a few, for each uh, thread, uh, sorry, each thread was going to look at their slice, take each tuple out and then you know, do the filter, do the hash act. And, and here, after you do the advance, you must write to memory. There's no way around it, right? So that's why there's a, there is a, a line there. You, you, everyone is a synchronization line. So every, threads is going to, um, every thread is going to hash and then they're going to write to memory, make a hash table. And at the end, there's going to be one thread that takes over from the hash act to do the, uh, the, the top hash 
which, which is taking a hash table from um, each thread. Every thread has its own hash table. So there's going to be a top hash act that takes the, a hash table from each of these uh, threads and merge them into a final hash table. And then you can go thread that again um, go, when you go up. Right? You can go through the hash table. In, um, you can again launch 16 threads and each thread look, look at um, distinct uh, section of the hash table. And then you can go up again in, in, in parallel. So, so in summary, um, oh, oh, so one thing that could go really, really wrong if you're not careful is threads need to share things. The threads must be shared nothing for you to go fast, right? Because if they share anything, you need synchronization, right? So each thread, and then you, when you need, if you need to synchronize, you don't really know where the threads are running. You may have four sockets four processors, and if a thread on processor one needs to talk to, need to send data, need data from processor four, then you are going to invoke a, a very high cost uh, transfer from, from the, from the uh, cache on processor four over to, to processor one. Right. So they're all shared nothing threads. Um, and then you need to pin them on the socket so that they don't jump around and you, you work on dif distinct buckets of the tuples, of, of, the, uh, of the table. And there are a few sync points that you need to worry about, and, but then not for hash join. Hash join is just going to push tuple through uh, all the way up. So it's going to take a, take a tuple. After you have a hash table built for hash join, it's going to take a tuple and then map, and if it, if it, passes, if it uh, joins, it's going to send the tuple up. So the thread will not need to sync, it, it will just uh, go straight up. Questions? No? Okay. So to go to 180 times, again, it's, um, it's just physics, right? So now we just add column store. And now, instead of, um, for Q1, instead of accessing, going through 16 uh, of the columns, and one of them is a comment column, which is quite big, um, you know exactly which column, the, the compa during compilation, you know exactly which column um, you need. So you mark them as needed, and then you just access those columns only. You don't access columns that you don't need. So essentially, that cuts down the number of bytes that you need to push through the processor. And, and that's, why, that's why it's physics in, in, uh, in column store. We're done, huh? okay. So I want to leave you with this picture. If you have a Ferrari, don't make it go through a lot of speed bumps, <laughs> right? So, so you know, there's no wonder that today when you buy a po more powerful machine with a faster processor, you put it in, it's, you don't see any performance gain, right? You, it, it's, all, it's because it's, it's, it's uh, choking, right, in, in, in Postgres. So here are some references that we use to, uh, to make uh, the product. Uh, if you're interested, uh, check them out. Um, yeah, that's it, 30 minutes.